Now that we understand shape keys well, let's put them into practice on our character to improve the deformations of elbow, knees and to some extent the shoulder. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I'll start with the elbow and I seem to be in FK mode, so I'll rotate the lower arm. You can also be in IK mode, you just need to see how the elbow looks when you bend the arm to an extreme. So the problem I see right away is that the elbow is a bit soft, it should be more pointy and protruding, and there is quite a bit of overlap between the lower arm and the upper arm. And this can be fixed very easily with a single shape key. So let's try to implement it. I'll go to object mode, select my character, go to data tab, shape keys. A quick reminder of our best practices you should start working on shape keys when most other aspects of the character are finished, such as modeling, rigging, and weight painting. If you need to do additional weight painting here, please do it before you start working on the shape keys. So to create my first shape key, I have to press the plus button, that will give me the basis shape key, and by the way, don't worry that the rig is currently deforming the character, that is okay, the basis shape key is actually based on the undeformed character. Or in simple terms, adding shape keys is fail safe, you don't have to worry about it too much. And now I'll, I'll go right away and add the first actual shape key with the plus button. And let's name it CS Elbow Fix. CS stands for Corrective Shape. It's just a naming convention I like. Let's set the shape to 1 so that I can also edit this shape in sculpt mode. And now with the grab brush, I'll start moving the vertices of the elbow and shape them exactly as I want. You can use any shading settings that make working on your character easier. Now here I may want to use smoothing in the transition between lower arm and upper arm. And to be more precise, I'm going to find the smooth brush, go to tool and set the strength to something low like 0.2 and then smooth lightly here. Okay, so this is before our shape key and this is after. A significant improvement, shape keys can be extremely powerful. If you want to edit this shape in edit mode, you'll see that the shape looks very weird. I'll explain why in a second, but for now go to your character, modifiers, and make sure that these options on the armature modifier are enabled. Now I can go to edit mode, and tweak my vertices with even more precision. Okay, I'll check my shape, tweak it a little bit more, and I'll call it done. Now, if I reset the pose of my rig, you'll see that this shape key, which we have enabled now, looks extremely weird. And that is because this shape only works in the context of the bent arm. Outside of it, it's nonsense. But that's okay, we are going to make this shape appear only when the character is bending the arm. So I'll set my elbow shape to zero. Now the easiest way to apply this shape is if I have an animation of the elbow, I can then also animate the value of this shape key. But that is obviously very impractical. So we are going to create a driver which says whenever the lower arm bends, enable this shape key. And the lower arm is really perfect for that because it only rotates on a single axis. So let's undo here until I remove the animation. And now let's see how we can create this driver which will trigger the elbow shape key when the lower arm is rotated. You already have some experience with drivers, so I recommend stopping and thinking about it for a minute. Okay, we're going to want this driver to work in FK mode, but also in IK mode. So we don't want to use any specific FK or IK bones. Let's unhide the MCH bones and start the MCH other collection. And this is where we have the MCH lower arm. This is the bone that switches its position depending on whether we are in IK or FK mode. So this bone will serve perfectly as our driver. 
I'll switch to rotation and local orientation. And I can see that the rotation axis I'm looking for is the local X axis. So we want to say when this bone is rotating on its local X axis, activate the vertex group. Let's go to object mode, select our character, go to data, right click on the value of this vertex group and add a driver and then right click again and open the driver editor. So we want this value to be driven by the armature and in particular the MCH lower arm dot R bone. And we'll switch type to X rotation in local space. And as soon as we do, our shape key is going to start taking effect. In fact, it is taking effect too strongly and too fast. So now we have to tweak that. I'll reset the visibility of my rig for now. And it's going to be easier to test in FK mode, so I'll switch the arm to FK. And I'll create a quick test animation again. I'll keyframe the lower arm at the default state. And then on frame 20 or so, I'll rotate it on the x-axis to an extreme and keyframe again. Let's also select these two and press T inside this editor and choose linear. So let's go back to our model and open up the driver editor and see what's happening. So the shape key is driven by the rotation of this bone and the rotation unit is radians, which I think we discussed earlier in the course. And here in the value section, you can actually see the conversion. Five degrees is equal to 0 0.9. So by the time I reach 60 degrees, I already have a value of one, which is the full shape key. What we really want is that this shape key does not really take effect at first, and then only when the lower arm and upper arms start to get close to each other, then the shape key will kick in. So one way to kind of achieve this, which you already know, is for example to divide this expression by two. And this is starting to look much better. In fact, I could take this as a solution. But let's learn something new about drivers, and that will allow you to control your drivers with a lot of precision. I'll set this expression back to just var. And then we are going to start tweaking this curve here. And I recommend disabling snapping for drivers. With snapping, I can only move this key in increments, which gets a little bit confusing. So I like to disable it, but the caveat here is that once you're done, you should enable it again, because this is the same setting for your animation editors. And when snapping is disabled in the animation editor, you may end up keyframe your character in between frames. With snapping, you will always keyframe at exactly frame 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. But without this snapping, you may end up keyframe between these values, which is possible, but generally not what you want. Okay, so now let's see how we can tweak this curve. So we have this test animation, which will help us a lot. And notice how as the lower arm rotates, there is this indicator which shows us what value we are getting for this driver. So now what I can do is get this first keyframe and rotate it, or I can grab its Bezier handles. And now we have this curve which starts flat, which means that there will be very little value change at first. And then the shape key value will start increasing very quickly. So let me go all the way to 20 to the full rotation of the arm. At this point, the value is already two, which is way too much. So I'll grab the second keyframe and press GY and move it down. So now I can see that the value is around 1.2. So let me move this further down. And now for this rotation, I'll be getting exactly a value of one. Actually a bit more than one, but our shape keys max is one. So this will work just fine. So I like this now. I think it looks really nice, but just for practice, I'll show you that you can do even more. For example, if you shift and click around here, you can select this curve and press I and choose only selected channel. And that will give you an additional keyframe which you can move. So for example, I can completely flatten the curve at first. 
although I don't like this much, so I'll tweak this key lightly. But definitely try to understand this curve because it gives you a lot of power. For example, I can move this keyframe so that the value will increase at first and then decrease again. That is not what I want here, but I just wanted to show you that it's possible. And that will be all for the elbow. I think it was an excellent exercise. And we can do the same for the knees, and the process is very similar, so try to do it yourself. This kind of problem-solving ability without following instructions is very important for rigging. The more you practice, the more you'll develop it. But if you want specific exercises to polish this skill, you'll probably enjoy Brilliant, who is sponsoring this video. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science and programming. It's built around problem solving, not memorization. So as you're learning about things like geometry, rotation, or systems, you're also becoming a better thinker overall. Their hands-on lessons are designed to be clear, fun, and effective, even if you only have a few minutes a day. Brilliant will also nudge you to keep learning with daily emails. And I personally have a 60-day streak at this point. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash cgdive or scan the QR code on screen or click in the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Okay, here is how I would do it. I'll create a quick test animation. Keyframe the body at the default position. And then at a later keyframe, bring the body down to see what the knees look like at an extreme angle. Then select the body, create a new shape key. I'll call it CS knee fix dot R. Let's work on the right side first. Looks like my body is tilted a bit. I'll fix it and record the keyframe. Now I'll set the value of the knee fix R to 1 and start working on it in sculpt mode. Because the character is wearing pants, I feel like the shape is mostly fine, but I'll try to fix it as best as I can. You can enable auto masking topology for the grab brush, and that enables me to grab only the connected parts of the mesh. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can actually copy the driver from the elbow fix and paste it into the knee fix, open the driver editor, and just change the bone from MCH lower arm to MCH shin.r. Now here, because of the roll of the bones, the resulting value seems to be negative, which means that this driver doesn't do anything. So I just need to set my variable to minus var, and then it will start to take effect. And it seems to be working. You can see how, as I scrub through the timeline, the knee fix shape key is activated. So now I'll do the exact same fix for the left side. And when we work on the face rig, I'll show you what we can do to mirror shape keys. It's not very straightforward, but it can be done with some caveats. So look forward to it. Let's create the next shape key and call it csnefix.l. Activate it. Select it so that it is exactly what we are tweaking. And then start tweaking your left knee. I'm not going to spend too much time on this shape. It's exactly the same as on the right side. But when you're doing this for real, then spend as much time as you need on the shape. It is the most important ingredient for making your shapes look good. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'll simply right click and copy the driver from the right knee fix, paste it here, open the driver editor, select my knee fix L, and just replace mch shin.r with mch shin.l. And now my shape keys should be working perfectly. And I can confirm that they also work when I move the leg.
and they also work in FK mode. Okay, now as a bit of a bonus, let's say that we want to do something similar for the shoulder, especially for when the character raises his arm. So let's create the test animation. I'll keyframe the upper arm and the shoulder at their default position. And let's remove the body animation. And then on frame 20, I'll raise the shoulder and the arm. And let's keyframe them as well. And make the interpolation linear. Okay, now let's go to the character. Create a new shape key. Call it shoulderfix.r. Set it to 1. Go to sculpt mode. And start sculpting. We can change anything we like here. Okay, let's call this good and let's try to set up the driver and the automation of this shape key. So let's copy this driver and paste it into the shoulder fix and open the driver editor. Now for the shoulder, we'll first test driving it using the mch upperarm.r. And let's check the orientations. So with the rotation gizmo in local mode, I can see that the main axis that rotates this arm up is the Z axis. So let's set this to Z rotation and test the animation. And it seems to be working. The value here is only 0.6. So I may want to move this end keyframe up a little bit until I get a value of 1. And this may look okay, but in reality, it is a little bit easy to break because the upper arm does not rotate on a single axis. We can also twist it, and now I'm testing it, and it's mostly okay, but in some extreme cases, you may see this weird deformation happening or a sudden flip. That is because we are using the Z axis to drive the constraint but when I twist the upper arm, I can achieve a pose which is technically arm up, but the z-axis is not really doing the raising of the arm. And here I was going to suggest that we create a whole new bone specifically to drive the shoulder shape key. This bone needs to be oriented the same as our MCH upper arm, but not twist with it. And creating additional bones may be necessary sometimes, but I realized that we already have a bone like that. That is our upper arm twist one. So let's go to the shape key and simply replace the driving bone with mch upper arm twist 1.r. So now I can try twisting this arm in very extreme poses, but my shape key is very stable. As a reminder, our first twist bone here has copy location and dumped track with head tail set to 1 so that it points towards the tail of the bone. It also has copy rotation set to a very low value, almost negligible. So if you had to create this additional bone specifically for driving the shoulder shape key, then you would have created it with copy location and dump track. And I said that we should enable snapping for the animation editors once we are done with the drivers. The reason is if I disable snapping, and I zoom in, see how I can move this frame between the keyframes. And that can cause a lot of trouble. So let's undo it and enable snapping. And now the frame will snap to the keyframes. Now I'll reset the rig and unlink the action. So this is it. This is all you need to know to create shape keys with a lot of control. The examples of the elbow and knee are the more common ones. And with the shoulder, we also covered quite a complex one. So I'm happy to move forward to the shape key face rig.